Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. The Transport Control Protocol, also known as TCP, is a Layer 4 protocol on the OSI model, which is the transport layer. And on the DoD model, it's, the layer, it's on Layer 3, which is the host-to-host -host layer. Now, TCP is a reliable connection-oriented protocol, whereas UDP, which is the other main layer for protocol, is not reliable. So that's the important difference between TCP and UDP. TCP is reliable, connection-oriented. UDP is not. TCP creates a virtual circuit with the destination. So it actually creates a connection, and we're going to see this virtual circuit here in a second. And TCP uses sequencing, acknowledgments, and flow control. Sequencing is where TCP takes large blocks of information, breaks them into segments, and then it numbers and sequences each segment so that they can be reassembled at the destination in the proper order. Because remember, with IP, it's not guaranteed that the packets are going to be received in the same order. So TCP handles this by uh, numbering and sequencing the segments. TCP also waits for acknowledgments. And if no acknowledgment is received, then it retransmits the segment. So remember, IP doesn't wait for acknowledgments. IP just sends the information to the correct network. And TCP is the, the watchdog, really, that says... Okay, I'm going to wait and make sure that this segment was received. The destination host will actually send back an acknowledgement and says, yes, I received it. And then TCP will continue sending new information. Uh, but if it doesn't get an acknowledgement from the destination host, then it's going to retransmit that segment. TCP also handles flow control. The three types of flow control are buffering, windowing, and congestion avoidance. Buffering is the process of making sure that we don't overload the destination host when we send. So let's say we're sending a lot of information and the destination host is starting to get overloaded. It can't handle that much information. Let's say your source computer is very fast, your destination computer is very slow. Well, with buffering, the destination computer can say, hey, hold on, you know, I need to finish processing what's in my buffer and a buffer is just what's left over in memory and then once it cleans up and processes what's in memory it will say okay go ahead start sending again so that's buffering windowing which we're actually going to see here in a second specifies how many segments or really how many bytes that a source machine can send before it gets an acknowledgement. We'll see more about that in a second. Congestion avoidance is actually algorithms to make sure that uh, we don't flood the network and the host and cause issues. TCP uses ports to pass data, the data stream to a specific upper layer service slash protocol. And we've probably heard this. HTTP normally runs on port 80 and that's TCP port 80. If it's using SSL, it's using port 443. And these are logical ports. So they're not physical ports that uh, are being plugged into. These are just logical numbers that are used so that the data stream that is assembled from all the different segments on the destination host can pass it to the proper service slash protocol. An example of this is if we're making a, an HTTP web request, we, the destination port is going to be port 80. And we're going to send that to normally a web server that is going to have uh, the web server bound to port 80 and listening on port 80 on that machine. So that when TCP passes it to port 80, it knows what to do with it. So technically, the port numbers are not uh, specific to a protocol. It's just a standard way of doing things. Like port 80 is, is HTTP, for example. But if, if you've configured a web server, you know that you can actually bind a website to a different port. So we don't have to use port 80. So these are just standards that we use. And port 1 through 1023 are actually reserved for these standard port numbers. And in a little bit, we're going to see uh, 
the standard ports that we need to know. And the highest port is going to be 65,536.